What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including backstage frustration with The Rock, a big Rock rumor shut down, WWE pulled star from events due to injury, a Bloodline member missing WrestleMania, Bray Wyatt documentary releasing on Peacock, WWE legends appearing during WrestleMania 40, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. And now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at The Rock is in the spotlight again. At the top of today's news are two reports concerning The Rock as the most electrifying man in sports entertainment continues to be the center of the WWE Universe both on screen and behind the scenes. As first, backstage frustration with The Rock. As we reported earlier this week, The Rock's rock concert on SmackDown raised some eyebrows, not to be confused with the people's eyebrow, due to the language used. But now Dave Meltzer is providing some intriguing tidbits on just how Fox was able to censor The Rock and why the WWE had any concerns about The Rock's use of language that other WWE superstars normally aren't allowed to use. So the deal with the TV, what they had to do was Fox gets a script ahead of time, so they know when to bleep. The Rock promo is completely scripted, but if it was anyone else, they would not be allowed to say it. With The Rock, it's like he can say whatever he wants, but we know he's gonna say it and when he's gonna say it, so anything that they wanna bleep out, they will bleep out. And they know when to bleep it out because they know ahead of time, so that's kind of the gist of the promo and why certain things were bleeped out. As some fans might be surprised to hear that The Rock uses scripted promos. One of the WWE Universe's biggest complaints has been how scripted promos have sapped the life from segments where WWE superstars supposedly speak their mind. It's unknown whether the scripts given to The Rock are outlines and who are writing them, there haven't been any complaints about the content of the promo so that The Rock has lost a step on the stick. So far the biggest complaint seems to be the length of The Rock's promos, something someone close to The Rock is refuting. However WWE talent still believe that there is a double standard with The Rock. Dave Meltzer of Figure 4 Online provided an update about the double standard causing frustration within the company. Meltzer mentioned that talent were never to use the word ass on Fox, yet The Rock used it several times on Smackdown. Meltzer also elaborated saying, as one person noted, he The Rock does what he wants and because he's on the board of directors, nobody's going to say anything to him. He also has an entire team of representatives that he surrounds himself with, so any issues they handle it, while he stays out of the mess with the people he directly leads with. But one person noted that there was a feeling that the era of Vince McMahon's double standards for his handpicked stars and for everyone else was over under Paul Levesque. What do you guys think on the matter? Do you think that it's fair that The Rock gets treated differently to other talent and says whatever he wants? Let us know in the comments down below, as Brian Gewitz shuts down a Big Rock rumor. Indeed, the biggest controversy concerning The Rock's promos on SmackDown seems to be how long they run. The belief is that The Rock has run over his allotted time, forcing WWE to cut time from other matches, something which impacts the WWE's full-time players. Recently, a report surfaced that The Rock's WWE SmackDown segment overran where time was cut on matches again. However, Brian Gerwitz, who SC Scoops reminded fans, has been The Rock's go-to guy as a writer since both were in WWE, and the two have obviously played a big role since getting back into the WWE fold. He replied, the segment went 30 seconds under its allotted 20 minutes. Whether or not The Rock went over may not matter as long as he continues to bring in the ratings for WWE. On the other hand, the WWE needs to be mindful that The Rock won't be on TV every week and may be absent for several months if the reports of him being busy with his latest film projects are accurate. While The Rock has been delivering ratings, the WWE hasn't seen any sign of fans sticking around at the same numbers once The Rock leaves. While business has been good and likely be even better at WrestleMania due to The Rock's presence, the WWE needs to find a way to turn The Rock's ratings boost into keeping fans around for all of SmackDown. Unfortunately, the WWE has been phoning in most of SmackDown, which could be the root of WWE's failure to pump up the show's ratings for the entire night. Next up, has WWE locked in the WrestleMania card? Does the WWE have the lineup for WrestleMania 40 penciled in? So far, they have announced nine matches as its website, not including the six pack ladder match for the Undisputed Tag Team Championship. While Triple H has been booking less matches on PLEs, it's likely fans will be getting at least six matches each night. That being said, is WWE still trying to figure out the rest of the card? Well, not according to Ringside News, which reported Logan Paul mentioned yesterday on social media that he'll be participating on the Sunday half of WrestleMania this year. When asking around about the card lineup for this year's event, Ringside News was able to confirm that both nights' lineups have been finalized. 
The WWE hasn't booked a women's tag team championship defense, but that may be up in the air depending on Asuka's condition. Following reports, she appeared to be limping during the most recent SmackDown. What matches would you guys like to see at WrestleMania? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, a star pulled from live events due to injury. Now is Asuka injured? Now as we just mentioned, the question remains unanswered, but the sportster's Jim Parsons reports the WWE pulled Asuka from live events, which suggests she suffered some sort of injury and the WWE is evaluating things. Unfortunately, we don't know, and as fans saw with Seth Rollins when he appeared to be injured during his Raw match against Jinder Mahal, the WWE won't reveal any medical details until it's ready to do so. Next up, Bloodline member missing WrestleMania. While the Bloodline is a key faction at WrestleMania, it looks like the group's enforcer Solo Sokoa won't be wrestling there again. It appears so far that Solo Sokoa appears to be without a WrestleMania match for the second consecutive year. While Solo isn't booked for the Showcase of the Immortals, it's more than likely he'll appear to interfere in any matches involving the Bloodline. Solo has been more of a background figure of late, and you may recall that Solo has actually been on a losing streak ever since he defeated John Cena in convincing fashion at Crown Jewel. A review of the Enforcer's record on TV and at live events show him losing an incredible number of matches, quite the opposite of his first year in WWE. Next up, a WWE superstar enjoying a win streak. One wrestler who isn't losing many matches is Omos. Wrestling News reports that the Nigerian giant Omos has been on a big win streak at WWE live events. At Saturday's WWE house show, Omos scored his 25th straight win over Akira Tozawa dating back to last July. Almost is 15-1 thus far in 2024 after holding a 33-4 record the previous year. And while wins over Akira Tozawa aren't exactly the stuff of legend, it's interesting that the WWE still sees Omos as someone worth protecting. Unfortunately, the big man is in a difficult position due to his size. On paper, Omos should be a monster that bulldozes over most opponents. At the same time, the WWE likely feels he's limited in how high he can go on the WWE hierarchy without winning a title and still seeming dangerous. While they could go the Big Show route and job him out and put others over, it seems like a waste of his potential. Sadly, the days of when WWE could send a talent like almost to other territories to keep him fresh, much as Vince McMahon Sr. did with Andre the Giant, are much over. Consequently, keeping him on the live event circuit and saving him for special appearances like Big Four PLEs may be the only way the WWE believes it can use him. What do you guys think of Almost's booking? Should the WWE use him differently? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, WWE Legends appearing during WrestleMania 40. It looks like fans attending WrestleMania 40 have a chance to see some WWE Legends as well as current WWE superstars. PW Insider is reporting that Michelle McCool, Jimmy Hart, Kane, JBL and Ron Simmons will be appearing during WrestleMania week. Fans are used to seeing WWE Legends pop up at Mania in backstage segments, but these Legends may be involved elsewhere as the WWE has major plans for events besides its show of shows. A WrestleMania has become more than just a two-night event as the WWE is working hard to transform it into a week-long celebration of all things WWE. Don't be surprised to see more WWE superstars as the WWE looks to squeeze every penny it can out of the WWE Universe. Next up, Bray Wyatt documentary releasing on Peacock. A Triple H has just made a major announcement as the new documentary covering Bray Wyatt's WWE career Becoming Immortal will come to Peacock on 1st April. Triple H posted on X, Wyndham Rotunda had a brilliant mind. There was no wall he wouldn't break down in the name of storytelling. He had no choice but to believe in him. He was just that good. The documentary will be narrated by The Undertaker. However, it is a little disappointing that people outside of the US won't be able to see this on Peacock as it's not available in other states outside the US. Hopefully WWE will have it on the network very soon. And Scott Steiner talks Braun Breaker not using the Steiner name. Last but not least, Bron Breaker, aka Bronson Rex Steiner, has been tearing things up in WWE ever since debuting on NXT and steamrolling over opponents while he captured championship gold, including the NXT Championship and NXT Tag Team Championship. However, fans who know his pedigree, Bron is a son of Rick Steiner and nephew of Scott Steiner, are curious why they don't have him use the Steiner family name. The WWE has acknowledged his famous family on TV, so what's the problem? Scott Steiner recently shared his take on things during an appearance at Monopoly events, saying, I'm not going to say anything as long as he keeps on doing what he does. Big Papa Pump reiterated he knows the WWE has its reasons for pushing his nephew as Bron Breaker rather than Bron Steiner. As fans know, they like to market its wrestlers with names it holds the rights to and that's likely the story with Bron, who might be reluctant to give up the rights to the Steiner name. 
Steiner noted, I give him shit all the time that he's stealing our shit. He does my Frankensteiner, does our suplexes, but he has his own specific way of doing everything, so it's definitely different. I take it as a compliment from him. I talk to him almost every week. We are still a tight-knit family. I think it's great and he wants to be a Steiner, but there's certain things that there's no reason trying to change. So if that's how they want to push him, so be it. It's not a fight worth fighting. Do you think he should use a Steiner name? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.